Deplatforming has been a big topic of conversation the past week. Between Parler getting kicked off of Google Play services and Trump getting kicked off Twitter, a lot of people have wondered where the future of social media is going to go. On one hand, I can completely understand why someone might not want to have hateful stuff thrown at them all the time on social media. I can understand why people might fear censorship from a lot of social media sites that are all being created by the same people in the same town with the same political views. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do with that. I mean, Twitter always has the right to kick off whoever they want from their platform, just like Facebook or any other site does. Mastodon is a service that essentially solves both of these issues. So unlike Twitter or Facebook or any of these other services, it's a completely decentralized, self-hosted uh, social media platform. So what that means is people host their own Mastodon instance, and these instances can communicate with each other. So if you think of each instance being essentially its own kind of kind of similar to a subreddit or any other uh, group that you would have on the social media site. Uh, if you want to have your own rules or whatever on the instance, you can. You can kick people off for whatever reason they can. And they can communicate with other instances that have their own set of rules. So what this means is that since it's a self hosted site and you make the own your own rules, um, you can essentially do whatever you want. You have free reign over it. And if people choose to communicate with you, they can. If they want to get rid of you, they can. Can. So famously, Gab, which is a, shall we say, edgier social media site, has recently uh, went on to Mastodon. Well, I say recently, it happened like a year ago. And this created a lot of issues because people wanted them banned, and Mastodon have a particularly liberal um, user base. But yeah, it wasn't really that big of an issue. People just like blocked their instance so they didn't have to communicate with each other, and they kind of swept off into their own little instance and were only able to communicate with each other. And that really is the beauty of having a decentralized platform like Macedon. So today I'm going to be installing it completely from scratch. Uh, so I'm going to be installing all the dependencies, all the services in the back end myself. There is an Ansible script that you can run that will set this up. Um, it seems to cause some issues for me, probably just because I'm running it on Ubuntu 20 instead of 18. Um, yeah, if you want, you can check out this Ansible script. It's going to be in the description below, but I'm not going to be running it today. So the first thing you're going to need is an actual server to run this on. Um, you could set a server up at your house if you want to, but I'm just using a virtual private server at the moment. Uh, the provider I use is Hostwins. Um, I don't really recommend them over anyone else. Like, I mean, they haven't caused me any issues, but, you know, just find the cheapest provider possible. Just search up virtual private server provider and you should be good to go. But yeah, once you have your virtual server set up, um, you're going to want to set up your DNS. So you presume you have some sort of a domain, like, I don't know, Mastodon.social is the main one. Uh, Mastodon.tech is another one. Just create a domain uh, that you want. You can call it whatever you want. And set up your DNS to point to your virtual private server. So I use Bind9, which is essentially just a DNS service or the dns server should i say that's running on my actual uh server itself so instead of you know having it set up on godaddy or whatever i just have like all of my uh domains and everything pointing to the ip address on my server itself um so yeah i created um, a subdomain called macedon um and my regular domain is on kugan.com so yeah that's just pointing to my server now so before we get started, there's a few things you're going to need on the server itself. Uh, you're going to want to get rid of password-based login and set up uh, fail to ban, which is just, you know, just a way to secure your SSH connections. Uh, I actually have a video on that, which you can see on my channel. I made it like three days ago or so. Uh, just very uh, convenient, I guess. Um, but yeah, you're going to want to set up fail to ban, uh, firewall, and password-based login. Again, just watch my previous video if you want to see how to figure that out. Um, I'm not going over that in this video. So yeah, let's get started. Um, I'm going to be using this installation guide, like I said. Um, so there's a few different dependencies we're going to need. First off, one is Node.js, the other is Yarn. Um, for whatever reason, using sudo apt-get didn't work for me. 
So you're going to want to curl it from uh, the node source and then just install it then. So yeah, once you've got that curl, just install Node.js, already had it installed. So the next thing you're going to want to do is install Yarn. Uh, for whatever reason, I needed to be root to do this. And then just and then just echo this into the source list. So the next thing we're going to want to do is add the Macedon user. So you're going to need to be sudo to do this. Uh, add user, uh, disable login, because you're not going to be logging in with this. And just call it Mastodon. Now just put in all the details. I'm not going to bother. Yes. Okay, and there you go. So before you switch to the Mastodon user, it's going to ask you for a password. So just set a password for it. So as you can see, uh, we're now at the new home for the Mastodon service. So or Benv or however you want to call it is one of the dependencies that you're going to want to install. So once you've cloned the Git page, uh, you go into the directory and, you know, just uh, run the source.config. But uh, there's actually a command in this installation script that, uh, or in this installation guide, should I say, that does this automatically. I'll just show you it here. Yeah, so just run this script and it should make it for you. So once you've run everything, you can install the correct Ruby version and yeah, it should be good to go. So this is just a quick tip if you had issues um, setting up the Ruby, like in the documentation. Uh, there's a dependency called libjamalloc.dev that you need to install with sudo apt or whatever uh, before you set the Ruby up. And so yeah, this uh, with jamalloc is added in with the flags when you run this. So this should work now. So just a heads up, installing Ruby like this, it's going to take a while. Like I think my CPU was at 100 for like, I don't know, maybe like 30 minutes or so. So once we've done that, you can just exit, go back to your regular user. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up Postgres now. So if you just run this command, so do a Postgres PSQL and type in your command. So once we're in Postgres, we're going to create the user, create user mastodon and then create db so again we're going to switch to mastodon and we're going to check out a git repository so this is the actual mastodon code itself um so you can go to you just look up uh, i don't know too sweet mastodon for git or if you are using this guide then it's just down here somewhere yeah so it's just here so after you've set up to GitHub, there's just uh, there's a few dependencies and stuff you need to install. You can follow these commands again. So this is just a quick tip if you're running the bundle install. Uh, you might come across an issue where it just refuses to install one of the dependencies. It says killed. Um, this happened to me because my server doesn't have enough memory. So what I did was... Uh, sorry. So I just set up a swap file. Um, if you run into... If you run into performance issues, then, you know, just set it up. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description for a guide on how to do that. So, yeah, once all that's done, just run the Rails app and this will uh, set up Mastodon for you. So you put in the domain name of whatever domain you set up originally. Uh, right now, I'm just going to set up uh, disabling uh, user registration because I'm not actually planning on using this as a Mastodon instance yet. I might do that in the future, but for this tutorial, I'm not going to do it, so I'm just going to put no, but you would put yes for yours. And I am not using Docker, so I'm going to put no. Uh, Postgres host, yeah, that looks right. Porsche 5432, yeah, whatever, looks grand. So yeah, just type in uh, the rest of these for now. I nearly forgot that when you're setting this up, you're going to need an email server, so an SMTP server. So you can either use the default that they give you with some, I don't know, some random default email server out there, or you can set one up. I have have a video on my channel on how to set up an email server and a load of different cloud services on top of your server already. So again, check that out. So if you do have your own email server, then what's going to happen is it's going to send a test email and you're going to be able to receive it. So yeah, that's grand. So instead of using Nginx like it does in the installation guide here, uh, I already have Apache set up, so I'm just going to use Apache instead. Uh, the only difference is you just need to replace Nginx with Apache in the command they have down here. 
and you just need to set up um, you just need to edit it the same way you would the regular file and so yeah once that's set up uh, just edit it and replace examples.com with your own custom domain so the next thing it says is to set up SSL certificate for your domain. So this is just so you can use HTTPS instead of HTTP. And you know what, I'm just going to go down a tangent here. But um, if you're not familiar, um, I'm just going to recommend something to you. HTTPS Everywhere is a add-on that you can have for your browser. So Chrome or Firefox, God, please tell me you're not using Chrome. But yeah, it's essentially just something that you can add on to your browser, like Firefox or Brave as I'm using. And what it essentially does is if a website has the opportunity to use SSL, um, it'll just automatically use it. So you don't have to worry about like, you know, having to type in bad credentials into uh, HTTP. Um, yeah, it's just a really handy add-on that you should be using. But anyway, that aside, uh, I'm just going to run sudo surfbot. Um, I'm going to run it on Apache 2. And again, if you use Nginx, like the tutorial said, then just do that. And I'm just going to put in my domain. So once you set up your SSL certificate and you've got your Nginx running, uh, just copy over that file to the system D file. Sorry, you need to be pseudo again. And yeah, just edit the files and make sure that your username is correct. Yep, that looks good. All right, so now we're just going to reload the daemon and, oh shit, you need to be pseudo again. And then just enable them the exact same way. And so this way, your thing will start at boot time. Now, if you go to your domain, everything should be set up. Uh, if you specify that you wanted an admin account when you're running the Rails app, then yeah, everything should be good to go. Uh, the only thing now is to go to your domain and set up anything else. So the good thing about Macedon is by having your own instance, you're able to form a more close-knit community and you're able to communicate on your own terms with your own rules. This is like similar to what social media should have been in the first place, you know. We shouldn't have had to go through all this trouble of having gigantic tech corporations taking all of our data and like selling it off to advertisers and so on. But yeah, each instance is able to communicate uh, based on its own rules. So yeah, if you want to kick people off for whatever reason, for being furries or for using coarse language or whatever, you can do that. If you have any issues with the installation, please let me know. Uh, again, there is an Ansible script that will automatically set all this up. It just, it didn't really work too well for me when I was setting it up on Ubuntu 20, uh, probably because it specified that you needed Ubuntu 18. But yeah, any issues, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you next time.